All right, hello everybody, mm -hmm. welcome back. Uh, we're here talking with some artists from the Air Force Reserve Art Program uh, known as Heritage and Combat Art. And we've got Lieutenant Colonel Warren Neary, which I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna call you. We've got, and we've got two artists, Kat, is it Jensen? Justin. Justin, I'm sorry. And then Darby Perrin. Now, if you could introduce yourselves with your ranks and titles and go around the room, that would be nice. So I'm Warren Neary. And by day, I'm the uh, I'm a his, I'm a civil servant for Air Force Reserve Command, the Office of History and Heritage. And then on the reserve side, I'm Lieutenant Colonel, uh, also uh, participating in the history program for the Air Force Reserve. Over to you, Kat, if you'd like. Uh, Tech Sergeant Kat Justin. Um, I currently work at the 459th Air Refueling Wing at Joint Base Andrews um, as a reservist, and then full time I work for the Combat and Heritage Art Program. I'm a uh, Senior Master Sergeant Darby Perrin. Uh, I'm a full-time artist uh, historian for the uh, Combat Heritage uh, Program, the Air Force Reserve. All right, excellent. So we're here today to talk about your work. We're, we're, we're going to have uh, Warren talk a bit about the program, and then we're going to get into artwork, specific pieces that you're working on. Is that correct? That's right. It's uh, great to be here with you, Chris, right, and uh, share a bit about our program and what we've been up to. All right, let's see if I can get the slides running here. I cannot. One a moment, please. Ah. So just starting out, uh, the Air Force Art Program started uh, with the birth of the Air Force, uh, about 800 pieces of art that came across um, from the Army Air Corps to the Air Force. And so I start with that because uh, that's, um, we, we support the big Air Force art program um, with, with uh, reserve art that covers uh, reserve missions, but also ties into the, to the uh, total force and, and joint missions services as well. And uh, as I understand, we understand today, there's about 200 active artists in the uh, reserve art program, and they, um, they and how that how that works? They they uh, began that a little bit different than the other services, working with uh, Society of Illustrators and other aviation groups. Uh, they would provide those artists opportunities to come on invitational orders, and they weren't obligated to, but they often did uh, create uh, great works of art that uh, has helped build up. Uh, the Air Force art collection. They have had some civil service and uh, military members also participate, but the bulk of that has come from those organizations. And a lot of uh, those artists also include artists from the golden age of illustration, um, includes you know, artists like Norman Rockwell, Walt Disney, Warner Brothers. Can we go to the next slide? Oh, We've got uh, Nikolai, and uh, he, he's in the collection. Go to the next one. I love that stuff. This is beautiful. Yeah, that is great. Uh, Wilson Hurley, and he has uh, a collection of art um, at the uh, National Museum for the for the Air Force at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Wonderful collection of his work um, is in the in the art collection. And then Maxine McCaffrey was also instrumental during uh, the Vietnam conflict. Uh, highlighted uh, POWs, and uh, that kept, caught a lot of publicity, and, um, and put pressure on the on the government to treat our POWs better. Can go to the next slide. And then uh, Keith Ferris and uh, uh, Bob McCall. And I grew up as a, as, a, as a young kid in high school and college. You know, I loved these, these illustrators and I looked up to them. And, uh, and so when you go to the National Museum, you can see Bob McCall's work, you know, three stories high, yeah. uh, just awesome, uh, awesome work. And so it's these, these, giant, these are the giants are, uh, are in the part of the program. And then, uh, so, so for me, um, I, I, I knew about the art program. I always thought, wow, we really need to be a part of that. I love the art. And, um, and so, um, and my, my, initially, I, I, I called up to, to, to see uh, uh, how I could get in. And, and, uh, some, and uh, somebody from the program, or I think it was in public affairs, actually said, oh, you know, the Air Force art program is not for, uh, you know, second lieutenants, you know. 
just for you know real artists. And so I thought, hmm, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> so it was, uh, shortly after that, um, I did a painting of uh, the missions of, of Whiteman, and I put my package together and I talked to the history office um, a few echelons up. You know, I was down on a squadron flight somewhere. Put my package together up through the wing, up through the match comp, and uh, never heard anything. Or I shouldn't say never heard anything, but uh, I didn't hear back right away. And so I was actually in, in a Gitmo in, in Cuba, uh, serving as a public affairs officer uh, a couple couple years later, and uh, and I was uh, and you know you engage a lot of news media stories at the time, and and this is a painting that I did while I was there of, of, of the missions, and uh, we wound up um, having that. Um, accepted into the Army Center for Military History. Uh, but as I was going through the, surfing the internet one day, I was, I was Googling my name, because sometimes, you know, you do news article stories and you're seeing where, where stories travel. And all of a sudden this photo came up. I was like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> that's fine. Oh, that's in the Air Force Top program. Oh, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> oh, no. so, uh, so I thought that was really cool. So uh, I was within uh, public affairs. And so we continued to, uh, um, to be uh, continue to be involved because in public affairs, you uh, you're involved a lot with um, uh, with with the Air Force Art Program because um, public affairs handles uh, media visits and so and uh, we also handle Air Force Art Program visits as well and so I. Uh, I was at uh, F.E. Warren Air Force Base, and so I, they asked me to participate and, um, and to help uh, with these artist trips. And so I had the opportunity to, to host one at F.E. Warren Air Force Base and then also help them up and down the front range, uh, visiting different missions. And then we wound up bringing them back out again. We asked them to come out to cover uh, the Peacekeeper mission because uh, that was deactivating. And so these are some shots of the, the teams that came out. And, a wonderful, wonderful, great, great artists and great to rub shoulders with them. And, and they have the opportunity to see things that most people don't get to see firsthand. And then they go back and they're not obligated to, but they often do uh, create artwork. And so this is from Mission uh, Mission Complete, a Peacekeeper Deactivation, the unveiling set uh, with the uh, Under Secretary of the Air Force at F.U. F. Warren. And these this painting highlights. It's the best way I, a lot of these paintings I could show more than Mission uh, versus just one vignette and go to the next one. Exactly. And so this is a uh, uh, JTF Katrina, 80 security forces, six helicopters going down to Keesler to help out uh, with uh, um, se securing the base and help helping the base. These are some of the shots with that. Can go to the next one. So these are some of the shots as we're getting on the ground and the news media are giving their stories. So while they were, I was helping them get access to the area and get the stories and the interviews that are needed, I was also looking and seeing what I could use uh, later down the road to create artwork and go to the next one. Oh, okay. I think we might be on the... Move on to the next slide. Yeah, I got to get to the next. Okay. We'll have to edit the... Um... These are you know, just some of the, the, the images of, of, what, of the devastation that we saw when we arrived and wow. um, helping the news media capture that. And so as I uh, what came away from that, here, here's I, uh, some of the paintings that I put together, security forces on patrol. Uh, wow. Our security forces took over for their security forces so that Keesler Air Force Base, so that um, those airmen could go back and assess the situation with their families and so uh, it was our security forces that came in and took over and, and uh, took care of the base and secured the base while they could assess. And so these are some of the paintings I put together for the next one. So, and also, uh, we had the helicopters came in providing food and water, or at least water and medical care, med 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 key, key medical drugs and things for the community. Um, and so this is one of the paintings I put together for that. Then, uh, of course, I was there as public affairs. So um, this is a painting I did of uh, public affairs in action. Uh, and yeah. Painting. We had media that were embedded with us, including Denver. So that's why you have Denver there. They, they are embedded. Also, the news media from Wyoming, uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. So they flew with us uh, to Keesler to, to, to cover the, uh, the outreach. 
Nice. This is a Occam's razor. So this is a special ops mission. Uh, there's a, a couple of uh, civilians who are badly injured. And so this is a painting I put together capturing that story and some of the, just the different aspects of uh, special ops. And so there you can see a sketch where I put together the initial idea. Um, and then I did a little color study on the, on the bottom left, top right to detail. If you go to the next slide, it gives you the overall overall image. That's, I don't know, probably about uh, maybe uh, 40 by 50 thereabouts on the far size, or oil, oil on board. Oh, okay. Wow. And then uh, next one is uh, Hot Shots out of Bannerberg. This was a series they asked me to come out and, uh, and uh, capture some of the different stories that they put together. Wow. And um, it's, it's so similar, you have the, the studies on the left, then the final painting on the right. A smaller painting, maybe uh, 18 by 24 thereabouts. The hot shots do a firefighting out of Vandenberg. And this is a 50th anniversary of Peacekeeper, of the, uh, the ICBMs. Ah. So this is a game, um, with the different families of, of uh, ICBMs, Atlas, Titan, Peacekeeper, Minuteman, and, uh, and the deterrence that they provided over the, over the years. And so we had uh, Secretary Donnelly came and visited us, and, um, and we did an unveiling at an event with, with everyone there. It was, it was great. Mm -hmm. Next slide. And then, uh, so while I was there, so I, I transitioned uh, from active duty uh -huh. down to reserve. And so I was uh, working with the history office as a reservist, a historian, and the Air Force Art Program kind of falls underneath the umbrella for, uh, or tied to the history program. And so Space Command, less than 1% of the art in the Air Force Art Collection is space related. And so this is a wide band global SATCOM and a joint operations for, for that mission. Next slide. I, I love that picture of the guy, uh, you with the uh, your palette. That is that is beautiful. It's, oh, it's good PR shot. <laughs> uh, and then so the, this is another progress kind of progression shot. Shows uh, my studio at the time. Um, and normally I do put it in a wash, but in this particular one, I didn't have a wash, an oil wash before I yeah. started laying in color. So, so this is kind of a pro progress shot. You go to the next one. This is a final painting. That this is pretty big, all framed up, maybe uh, five feet high, five, five and a half feet high. Wow. And is it on board? Do you, are you doing it on board as well? So this one is on linen oh. um, and it, it actually got punctured. And so then I had to transfer it to board and then uh, fix it. So uh, so the question is, if you see it, see if you can find where I punctured it. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That was scary because there was a lot of work that went into that. Oh, yeah. And so this is an art presentation to turn over. And so every couple of years in the past, the Air Force Art Program would invite all the, uh, all the artists who had created artwork. And they initially had a bowling Air Force base and went to the Museum of the Air Force. And so they'd all meet together, they have a show, and then they open that up to the public. The public can come in and see all the artwork, highlighting all the various missions. Um, it was great. Great, um, great opportunity for the public to see what we do. I got the privilege of going to one of those gala things uh, one year, and uh, there was a oh. Marine, uh, one of our Marines had artwork in it too. And, uh, That's had, awesome. Yeah, it was great. Oh, it was it was awesome. again in the not too distant future, it would be nice it, again. It would be awesome. Yeah, or even joint would be awesome. Um, hosted by one of that'd be fantastic. Um, this is Bandage 33. So this is one of the first paintings I did for the Air Force Reserve. Even though I was in the reserve, I was primarily uh, covering active duty missions. And so the Air Force Reserve Command historian, Dr. Malahusky, um, he brought me on board. I wound up transferring to uh, Air Force Reserve Command and stood up the Air Force Reserve with his, under his uh, guidance, the Air Force Reserve's Combat Art Program. So this is a Banish 33. So I went down to uh, San Antonio and um, the actual uh, uh, airmen who were involved, Adriana Valdez and Amanda Pina, um, they, we set this all up uh, the way that it, it would have been uh, the best we could. And then we, I put the painting together and then we had the opportunity to, to unveil this one along with the next one um, with General Welsh. And so this is a uh, combat air patrol in the Persian Gulf, an Iranian F-4 is tailgating one of our RPAs and we set up F-22s to tell him to go home. And so <laughs> the, <laughs> so it's, it's a great story. 
Let's go to the next one. Oh, I think we're one moment, please. Uh -huh. On to the next one. So, um, Here, so hold, those three for hold for a second. We're gonna we're gonna switch over and we'll edit this part out when we do our thing. So. Okay. Is this the next one? Yeah. Recognize this one? I do. So this uh, this painting is the rescue of, Mar of uh, Marcus Luttrell, the uh, Navy SEAL. And uh, we had a reserve team, if you go back a slide. Um, this shows you uh, shots when I went, we went out on location. Um, Spanky Peterson, the pilot, he helped me put it all together. Um, with uh, Josh Apple, he was one of the PJs. And even though it happened you know, a decade earlier when we put this together, um, they helped me get it right, gave me the GPS coordinates. We went out to, uh, to uh, Davis Month and we set up at nighttime with a helicopter and I got imagery and did little studies. And then we were able to unveil it with the Secretary of the Air Force and we had the team there and we're at uh, the Air Force Association Gala in uh, Washington DC, you have you know, thousands of airmen there. So it was a great opportunity to highlight this mission and what the reserve uh, contributions to national defense and, and uh, the various missions that they participate in. And so it was through that, and then if you go to the next slide, this is the, 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 the rescue, the pickup. People ask, you know, is that, is it, does it really glow like that? And it, it is, it's a static electricity from the, from the dust in the air, and there's different names for it. Is, uh, our pilots call it pixie dust and call it, people uh, call it saying it almost file. Maybe the our Marine Corps got another name for it. They probably do, but it's probably very guttural. Who knows? But I've, I've seen it myself personally. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So you know what it's like. Oh, yeah. Next slide. This is a gunship. So similar process going. We went out uh, to a museum uh, where there was a gunship. Uh, AC-130 gunship was about 90, 90, 95% complete. And then I uh, also had the Jaws of Death here and, uh, and uh, Warner Robbins. And so uh, we, uh, the, uh, the crew, and uh, we had airmen that were on, a, on another uh, gunship um, there to model for us to kind of reenact it, put it all together and help us to get it historically accurate. And then we unveiled it with uh, the uh, AFSOC. And then uh, we, this is the final painting that I, that I, that I've done most recently. It was of uh, Sergeant John Chapman. It's a, a real honor to put this together. He's the first uh, recipient of the Medal of Honor for the Air Force in 50 years. The last one was awarded in Vietnam. Yeah. And if you go to the next slide, and this is the, the final painting. And so this is depicts him uh, just before uh, basically laying down his life for his friends. And so this is the legacy that he left. And it was uh, just an incredible story. Um, they're um, overrun in uh, Operation Anaconda. This is where the quick response force is coming in. And he was laying down suppressive fire against the enemies and allowing his friends to come in safely to rescue um, the rest of the, the uh, special operators that are on the hillside there. Yeah. And so uh, we, we had the opportunity while we were putting the program together uh, had responsibility for the 70th anniversary of the Air Force Reserve. And so we did outreach activities across the United States, um, sharing lithographs and we go out and do and the stories of each one are on the back of the lithographs. And it's a way that we can share our stories and we also have them on, on uh, the website. It's just a way that we can share history and share um, all these different stories and inspire airmen. airmen um, so they can see that we've done hard things before and we can do hard things in the future. And, uh, and helping uh, the public understand, have an appreciation for what we do, uh, as well as our, our corporate par partners and coalition partners. And so this is just a great venue with uh, combat art to, to show the past um, and to keep it fresh and alive and, and to inform and inspire. And it's been a pleasure to, to share these, to, to be with you and to, to share a little bit about the uh, Air Force Art Program. And next up, we got, looks like we have a uh, CMAS Sergeant Darby Perrin and uh, what, and his contributions along with Kat Justin and what she has done as well for our program. They're both uh, fantastic artists. We're really grateful to have them on our team. Thank you, sir. Thanks. 
All right, so this is uh, describing a certain painting. Is, it, is that correct? That's correct. And I've, uh, I provided uh, two slideshows uh, for the express reason. I picked these uh, two paintings in particular because uh, one, the one we're about to look at, We Move Your World, is history in the making. This is a uh, stuff that we're currently involved with and uh, that's, that's deemed important and we, uh, we want to document and we want to make uh, people aware of. Uh, the other one is history that's happened in the past that uh, may be lost in, in time just to a, a paragraph or a page somewhere that somebody may or may not ever read that we think is, is important to highlight as well. So this first one here uh, highlights an IRT mission uh, that took place uh, uh, spring in uh, 2018. And uh, we uh, were able to uh, coordinate timing to get to uh, uh, Grissom Air Force Base and uh, Watch this C-17 come in to pick up uh, uh, this uh, this cargo load, and uh, we, uh, between uh, Colonel Neary and myself, we uh, we took uh, about 300 photos apiece, mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see it in the next couple of slides where we just personnel, equipment, whatever we could get to to make this a, a really nice, detailed, dramatic painting. So, uh, and me personally, I already had an idea. You know, I did the sketch. Uh, to, you know, I kind of knew what was going to look good and uh, how we're going to do this. So uh, on site, did a little bit of uh, plein air and a little bit of sketching. And uh, then it was, this one was <laughs> a no brainer. This was uh, a matter of polishing from the beginning, just knowing what this was going to be uh, from the very get go. Wow. So uh, wow. on the next slide, you'll see uh, I'm putting together uh, uh, some uh, studies if it'll advance, there it is. Uh, these are the two studies I put together and uh, wanted to focus on different uh, coloring and uh, reflections on the ramp. And uh, like I say, this was a no brainer. We knew uh, how this was gonna go from the beginning or more or less. Yeah. Uh, so, and then it was just a matter of polishing, getting the details right. And so the next few slides are the painting going together. And uh, you can click through these uh, at your, uh, leisure and uh, you can see how I've uh, drawn it on and I'm the kind of artist I draw in layers mm -hmm. and uh, paint in layers and uh, it'll all come together here at the end. And... Mm -hmm. So you paint, uh, you said you paint in layers of this oil or what do you work in normally? All oils, yeah I switched uh, in 2001, probably the dis best decision I ever made. Uh, very happy with oils. <laughs> I uh, can't even a oh, we got an audio problem. Senior Master Sergeant, can we hear you? I message Tim. This is coming down nicely, very. There you go. Uh oh. It disappeared on me. I think he restarted. Well, we'll be editing out. This is. Did he say how big this was? Yeah, this is, uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can yeah. hear you. Okay, I'm back. Uh, yeah, this, uh, like uh, Warren says, we like to uh, paint large in our program. This one is uh, about a uh, 30 by 50. Wow, good deal. And there's, uh, this is the detail shots of it. About how long does it take you to do this? Oh, five months later. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, and it, it varies from painting to painting. And this kind of detail, and, and this one didn't require a lot of uh, correction. This one really went to well first try. Uh, so five months was a, a pretty solid time frame for this one. I've had other paintings that have taken me seven or eight months uh, just because of the amount of corrections that we had to go back and make and uh, little tweaks here and there. And uh, once I get the bulk on, I can get the, the bulk of a painting together in about two months. And then it's all tweaking the details after that. Uh, but this one, yeah, five months is about standard and uh, to do something this size and uh, that kind of detail. 
That, yeah, that's all. Awesome. Uh, Wise and um, he's working on other projects as well. So it's not all. Yeah, and that's uh, it's hard for me to work on one painting for eight hours straight. Uh, I'm smearing paint with my arms and everything uh, after about two or three hours. So they load me up with uh, either more than one painting or uh, some computer programs or whatever else I have to do. But uh, yeah, they, they, they definitely keep me busy doing all kinds of creative projects. So this next one, uh, uh, arguably one of my best pieces, uh, not only because the painting came out so well, but because of the nature of the mission. And this is one of those that would have been definitely lost in the annals of time and nobody would have known about it. Uh, they brought it to my attention and said, hey, do you think you could interview this crew and make this into a, a, a nice painting? And after reading the story, yeah, absolutely. Uh, these guys uh, really came close to dying. And to go up and interview these guys in person and put it together this painting was a, a real honor. It was great. This is the actual uh, aircraft that was involved in the incident. So uh, That's good. not yeah. just any C-130, but the actual C-130 that was involved. So I went out and took some really nice detailed shots. I uh, got about, uh, you know, 50 to 100 shots. This is uh, the loadmaster that uh, was involved. Uh, when they actually entered the uh, column of smoke and flame, uh, there was a lot of blowback and they had the ramp down. So the, there was a lot of blowback inside the aircraft. Oh, wow. And uh, everybody got a little bit of singed. Everybody got a lot of smoke inhalation. And uh, that was the least of their worries at the time. They were only at 150 feet, and they were all pretty sure they were going to die. Uh, I put together three studies. I was only able to find uh, one of them. Uh, and then I move along to the, this is the painting progression. Okay. And this one's a large painting. This is a 40 by 42, I believe. Wow, you read my mind. I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> Again, painting in layers, uh, just one thing on top of the other. And uh, one thing I love about the oils is they're very forgiving and you can just add and add and add and, and uh, just like it was day one. It's a, it's a lot of fun to work with. Beautiful thing. This is the unveiling at the uh, Air, Airlift uh, Tanker Association uh, convention in 2017. I had uh, uh, the commander of Air Force Reserve Command, uh, um, Marianne Miller, she was able to uh, Helped me unveil the painting as well as, well as the squadron commander of the uh, uh, 731st Airlift Wing. Not so uh, it was a, it was a packed crowd, and the uh, painting uh, it garnered a lot of attention. And uh, I, you know, I'd been so close to the painting for so long, I really didn't realize that it was one of my better pieces until you know <laughs> every general in the place had to come up and shake my hand and slap me on the back and tell me it was, it was a really nice job. So it was, it was a great time. That's a good thing, uh, yeah. <laughs> definitely one of my favorite days in the program. All right, so let's see. Um, once more. All right, so now we have Technical Sergeant Cat Justin. That's correct. I'm a combat artist with the Reserve Command, Air Force Reserve Command Office of History and Heritage. Um, I'm new to the program, um, roughly around 2018, when we had the 70th anniversary of Air Force Reserve. Um, I did a piece for the program. And since then, they've uh, hired me on to uh, create more pieces. So I do, I currently do painting, sculpture, and graphic design. So the first piece that I did uh, for the 70th anniversary um, was to feature our maintainers. So I work in public affairs and basically we, you know, we execute commander's messaging and we take a look at like what issues are facing the Air Force and how to address those issues. And one of the things that we were facing was a shortage in maintainers. And so uh, I reached out to the program and asked them if they would be willing to um, feature a female maintainer once we can get 
um, more of our uh, female personnel featured in some of the art in the art program, but also highlight them as workers in this field. And so um, we started out coordinating with the unit to do, um, to get the aircraft out on the flight lines. So it was a nocturnal scene and they brought out light alls and I had my whole photo studio kit out there and we took some reference images. Um, and then from that, so I take that back in my studio. So I'll talk a little bit more about technique. Um, so I take that back in my studio and I, so I do a color study. And then at the next slide, um, what I do is I take the image and I make it black and white. Mm. And then I up the contrast and I enhance the exposure so that you see the lights and the darks are really intensified. And what that does is it creates a map for transitioning the piece onto the canvas to work from. Because a lot of the drawing takes place um, in the development process, right? In the layering of the paint. And so this is just kind of a roadmap here. Um, to get started. It's done in a, like a, a burnt sienna wash. Are you, are you classically trained? Uh, I am. So I went to the Maryland Institute College of Art on my GI Bill, which was yeah. uh, just truly a wonder to have um, school covered and then be able to take that and then bring it back in the Air Force uh, Reserve program. Good deal. So this is just showing, um, chunking in some of the, some of the colors. And then here is like, it's a, it's a broader example of the process of the layering. And as, as you can see, like uh, it, it starts with large shapes and then you work your way down into the, the shadows and the highlights. And so the highlights, um, what I do is I use kind of like a transparent white, like a zinc white, and I'll mix it with a, a color and you, you dry scumble it with, with a dry brush and it, you can build up successive layers and form that way. In the reverse direction, I'll use a glazing medium of um, Damar varnish, Gamsol, and linseed oil um, with a transparent or semi-transparent uh, shade, like a shadow hue. And then it basically the, the layers separate and you get that push-pull of light and dark. Very nice. So this is the, this is the final piece. Um, and what I do, once it was all uh, finished up, we waited a couple months and we put a, a, um, a gambar varnish on it. So what that does is you'll have like parts that are a little bit more lustrous than others. Like some, some will be a bit matte and some will be really shiny based on what the, the medium is that, uh, that you're working with. And that helps uh, make it look cohesive. Very nice. So this is the event. This is at Warner Robins um, at the Aviation Museum. Um, this is when it was uh, first displayed in conjunction with um, some of uh, Senior Mass Sergeant Perrin and Lieutenant Colonel Neary's work. So it was the first time that I got to show with them and it was truly an honor. And um, uh, General Miller was there as well. Cool. So, yep. And then just examples of our outreach. So we have the Air, Air and Space Expo here up in National Harbor. and also travel to air shows and display the lithographs. So what's great about this one was um, it reached out, it reached to a lot of maintainers and I had some female maintainers come up, just mind blown. They're like, oh my God, that's me. Like I'm featured in the painting. So it was really exciting to like have that personal touch um, to someone in the Air Force Reserve. Yeah, we, we talk about that a lot in, in combat art in the Marine Corps too, how, how it's an outreach. And in, in some ways it's almost a, a chaplain's ministry in, in a way for morale. Absolutely. So uh, sculpture. So um, this, uh, this facet of our program um, is something that I've been truly excited to embark on. Um, I did some sculpture in school. I was working from 3D models. Nice. Um, so uh, there are some challenges here with working from images, um, trying to um, get that realistic representation and that feel for the person. Um, so to start out, I would I built this stand here with the Lazy Susan and use piping sure. to, to hold it and you build the clay up um, and the larger forms. Um, I also did some research. So seeing as I didn't have the live model in front of me, I realized I kind of had to go back to school um, to uh, just just get you know more proficient on anatomy and sculpture, so I would visit museums and uh, you know see what other artists had done with their busts. Um, some other techniques that I used was anatomy books. Um, I did a lot of sketches, um, and then I have a graphics tablet and a phablet, like a phone tablet, and I would go in and, and demarcate places that I wanted to change before going in and doing so. 
And another cool technique that I use for sculpture is I use the VR headset. So um, I bought a VR headset and I would go into these 3D programs and study anatomy. Um, basically, I was like standing before like a giant skull. And these are things that anyone, you know, you can get like a, a cheap set online and anyone can use that for reference. Um, I also had a live model for a little while, but it ended up looking too much like him. <laughs> so uh, I used uh, I used him for like the clothing, and then I I went to a secondhand um, like a clothing mannequin display store, and I found this mannequin, so I was able to mount the the clothing on there. So that was really helpful as well. Okay, so yep, this is me in the studio. This is like kind of getting near the end of um, end of uh, completion on the bust. Um, working in various tools, loop tools. I had I used calipers for measurements. Um, I, I tended to find that like, again, like the challenges with the photo is um, it, coming from a painter, uh, kind of like a realist painter to sculpture. When you don't have like a definitive three-dimensional uh, reference, like all the photos in the round, you have to work in between the photos. So I, I really came upon challenges where I was trying to like, you know, realistically match measurements that I was seeing and it just wasn't possible because there's so many variables um, such as people's age and uh, the weight, things like that. So this is this is near complete piece. Um, basically, we're, we're looking to get this among others to be uh, made uh, for memorial parks and uh, potentially featured at like command headquarters, potentially the Pentagon. Nice. Um, things like that. And so it's a way for us to recognize uh, the citizen airmen that have made tremendous contributions or, or their notable citizen airmen that have served with the Air Force Reserve Command um, to, to, to honor them and their venerable service and giving their lives for our country and their countrymen. So I believe that's all we have time for at the moment. So what we're gonna do now is go into live question and answer with the audience. And so we're going to see you uh, there at the moment at the uh, symposium and we will answer the crowd's questions. And so we will. So I've got a couple questions that I jotted down from people in the chat. So one question is for Warren. Uh, how does the Air Force see your role in their future? This is actually my question to you. Is Warren here? Well, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I don't know why I don't have video, but hey, here oh. I am. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I uh, actually just recently, within the last year or so, I uh, worked with um, Greg and the history program to have our AFIs rewritten. Uh, so that it would uh, be more inclusive of civil servants and active duty or, or active duty or, or reserve on active duty artists uh, participating in the program. They participated prior, but the, if the Air Force instructions didn't recognize it, and so we're able to work through those um, so that our program is now um, officially supported by AFIs and is now in concert with our sister services who have had um, civil servants and military members in their programs for, for years. Does that answer your question? Very good. Yeah, it's, I'm sure that they're delighted to see all the work you're doing and, and how it's standing up and going forward. Yeah, on the reserve side, yes. Uh, a lot of, they, they love the program um, and, uh, and have mentioned to our boss to protect it. Uh, we don't, we don't require a lot of funding. You know, it's a small team, but uh, they do appreciate it. They like the, the impact that it's had and the legacy that it's creating. And Big Air Force has also appreciated the artwork that we've provided to them. They do like us to keep them in the loop, uh, just so they're not surprised by anything that we do. Um, but as long as we do that, everything's good. Yeah, they don't want you winging it. <laughs> I do apologize. So another question uh, on a more serious note, how, how is the passage or the passing, this is from Mark Poole, how has the passing of Greg Thompson affected the program? I, I know that 
personally, from our standpoint, it was a, a tragic loss, uh, both professionally and personally. Um, and I know that uh, the, I think the director that oversaw the program above Greg also rotated out earlier this spring. So there's been a lot of turnover. Uh, you know, I don't know what the way ahead's gonna look like. Um, I haven't had a lot of correspondence with them following that because I mean, you know, with COVID and everything going on. But um, I know that uh, Rusty Kirk is still in that area. It can prov prov probably provide some continuity, but yeah, just really, really sad to see Greg go. Total, took us by total surprise, total shock. We had a lot of grand plans planned and uh, he was just a great man. We really loved working with him. And uh, I've, I've worked with him for almost uh, two decades. So we'll see. Yeah. Okay, this is a question we had for um, uh, Senior Master Sergeant Perrin. How do you select what you paint? Do you do people give guidance, PAO, etc., or do you yeah. decide? Well, we've got a crack team of historians, and they're constantly going through the books and finding really interesting uh, stuff that may or may not make a good painting. And then uh, they'll suggest something. Hey, what do you think you can do with this? And uh, we'll do some sketches and uh, uh, just kind of brainstorm some ideas. And you know, not all all the ideas make it, but some of them that uh, they get grip. Uh, once they have, we have the traction for them, then you know it's just a matter of uh, okay, what do we need to do to make this happen? Uh, they'll send me out to do the research and uh, start uh, doing the sketches and the paintings uh, and uh, getting something built up for a large scale uh, event. Uh, usually, I've got about six designs that I'm kind of working on and then maybe a couple more that I'm really working on and then it's a constant flow of information coming my way that I have to filter through and uh, prioritize and figure out what we're going to do with. So pretty low pressure for the most part. Uh, sometimes they'll uh, give me a deadline that, uh, you know, hey, we need this in a month. Okay, well, that's not my priority and I'll switch. Not for enough. All right, so we've got a, another question um, from Gail Monroe about sculpture. So this is for Kat. Um, oops, here we go. So um, uh, how do you send out to cast or how do you get, uh, arrange for the casting of your sculptures? Uh, so we haven't actually sent it out to cast yet. I recently deployed in the process, uh, according to the foundry, is gonna take about three months. So we wanna be there for the final result when they do the, the patina and like any additional details at the end. So there's a foundry up in Baltimore that we work with and I send the dimensions out to them and they give us a, a, an estimate of what it's gonna cost at the end. So we'll get the, uh, the mold is separate from the actual casting. So once you get the mold, you can make successive casts from that. So we could do like plaster. Um, I'm considering seeing if other museums are interested in like using the mold for their own um, displays if they want to have something cast. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a local one. One of the, the considerations that I'm a bit concerned about is taking a, a piece, I don't know how heavy it is, but as heavy as it is and with the detail that it has and getting it in a vehicle and driving it up. So there's, there's certain challenges that we haven't faced yet, but we'll, we'll tackle them when they come. Well, these are good challenges to have. It's great seeing you guys do such a, a full service shop, so to speak, um, a Renaissance type coverage of all types of creativity. I was joking with you guys when we were doing the uh, pre-record and, and I was like, you know, the Marines, we say, oh, we got this, man. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this. They're doing this. <laughs> look at the Air Force, look at the Army. Oh my goodness. So yeah, well, very well done. It's, it's wonderful seeing this. You guys are awesome. We, we love participating with you. Well, do, uh, do keep us posted. Of course, we're gonna do this, uh, like I said, live in person coming up, but um, um, does anybody else have any more questions for the Air Force Reserve Program? I, I did, Chris. Okay. I, I yeah. typed something earlier. I'm not sure if anybody saw it. Yeah. I believe, Kat, you made a comment when you were talking about this fabulous painting you did of uh, a woman as well as a man working on uh, mechanics. And you said you had to get permission, I think you said, to show a woman. And I'm wondering. Did I hear that correctly? And if I did, why? <laughs> uh, um, ho hopefully I didn't use permission. If I did, then maybe I mis misspoke. I think um, uh, it goes back to like what we paint, right? So like you can have the programs 
uh, communicate what they would like you to cover. But being the first piece that I was doing, um, I wanted to feature these things, like coming from that public affairs background and seeing the challenges that my unit was facing. So it was more like pitching them an idea, like, hey, I'm really passionate about this. Um, I've met with uh, World War II Rosie the Riveters, and I've heard about their challenges that they faced coming through the years in that career field. And just, uh, just knowing like the, the ratio of women to men um, in the maintenance career field that we have on Andrews, um, I wanted to be able to help promote the career field um, and also the, the breadth of people that work in it. So it was more like, hey, can I, can I do this? And they were like, yeah. So that's how that went. Well, it's a, it's a wonderful piece. I'm so glad that you put forward that idea. I think that's true in so many aspects of the military uh, around the world and around any business that to show that diversity of gender, of ethnicity, whatever, it shows a better rounded, you know, team for sure. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. Chris, if I may have one other question. I think sure. that at one time the the New York Society of Illustrators was key in the Air Force Art Program. Uh, is anybody there can speak to that of what happened or not? I know we have a COGAP artist, James Consor, who used to deploy a lot with the Air Force. So just curious of where the Society of Illustrators does or does not fit in in present day Air Force art. Warren, do you have anything? So Warren, as far as I know, that's still ongoing. We haven't had the presentations, but to my knowledge, um, the Air Force Art Program still has those relationships with the, with the different societies across the United States. Unfortunately, with the financial impacts after 2008, the art turnovers and the, and the program was hit pretty heavily financially and also from a um, the program has rolled into other other programs, um, but as I understand it, though, that within just prior to Greg's passing, they're just beginning to move forward, and and uh, they're sent, they're having art trips going out. Um, so unfortunately, with Greg's passing, that's going to be a bit of a setback. Is it really is the Air Force program then limiting themselves to only? Um, active duty military in the Air Force or reserves or are civilians still welcome into the program? So the, and once again, I'm on the reserve side, so I'm not really in a position to speak on behalf of big Air Force and their program, but to my knowledge, um, that program hasn't, hasn't changed. It's still primarily comprised of those relationships with the Society of Illustrators as well as different aviation groups. So it's primarily uh, so, uh, civilians who participate in that program and active duty military and civil servants are a small minority. For the Air Force Reserves program, our program is primarily us three artists, but we have started, but we're just fledgling, we're just beginning. Um, and, uh, but we have uh, re recently, just within the last year, started working with the with the sculptor who volunteered her services and she's very talented and we're very appreciative and so we're open to uh, civilians also participating and we want to um, our plate is full though uh, just handling what we've got but as we're hoping as we um, get our legs underneath us and as we move forward we'll be able to include civilians on invitational orders to join us on, on different missions. Thank you. Does that great answer your question? Really great presentation by everybody. Thank okay. you. I'd, I'd like to thank uh, the Air Force Reserve Program for coming out and, uh, and being with us today. Um, it's been great seeing how you guys work and, and the different, not only between artists, but just between programs and sharing with us. Very well done, very well presented. Thank you. It was wonderful to participate. We really uh, love being with you and uh, to continue in the future in collaboration with you. Thank you so much. Good deal. Well, thank you once again.